JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, former government minister Odi Ramtali dies at 96. Former government minister Odi Ramtali, who only recently celebrated his 96th birthday, died late Sunday. The former vice president of the People's National Party had been hailing since 2012. He previously served as housing minister and later minister of state in energy and mining in the 1970s. Ramtali was also a former member of parliament for Southwest Clarendon and Central Clarendon. He served the PMP in Jamaica under one chief minister of Jamaica and the three prime ministers, Norman Manley, Michael Manley, PJ Patterson and Portia Simpson Miller. Shadow Minister Peter Bunting in 2012 lauded him for the pivotal role he played in helping the party to win at the polls in the 2011 general election, namely his assistance with the West St. Mary seat. Following news of his passing, several senior party officials took to social media platforms to share tributes for a man described as selfless and committed to nation building. I have been advised that veteran PMP stalwart Odi Ramtali has passed. He was a passionate and truly committed comrade, selfless in his love of party and country. May his soul rest in peace, said party leader Mark Golding. Goodbye, and so long faithful and loyal comrade O.D. Ramtali. Your trumpet has sounded, and you have answered the call. Rest in peace, added Donna Scott Motley. Satan among five killed in Sav in less than 24 hours. A was small and man was gone down at his home early on Sunday morning, bringing to five the number of murders that were committed in Sav Lamar, the parish capital. Within less than 24 hours, the latest victim has been identified as 30-year-old Mark James of a St. Crescent, Savlomar address. Reports are that about 3 a.m. on Sunday, James was shot and killed at his home by unknown assailants. An upcoming entertainer and a female were the first casualties of the day's mayhem in the rural town. They were shot dead by gunmen on Saturday morning. The deceased have been identified as Akeem Bradbury, otherwise called paparazzi an entertainer and resident of Dunbar's River, Westmoreland, and Andreka Smith of Rickett Street in the parish capital. Reports are that at about 7.30 a.m., 41-year-old Bradbury was driving a motor car along Rickett Street when he was attacked by a gunman and shot several times. Reports are that the gunman then entered premises along the same road where they opened fire and then fled. The female was later found suffering from gunshot wounds. Both victims were rushed to the hospital where they were pronounced dead. Men believed to be those who shot and killed Bradbury and Smith later went to the nearby Darling Street where they shot Dwayne Fong who was sitting at his gate. Fong was taken to hospital where he died while undergoing treatment. Then on Saturday night, 44-year-old O'Neill Reed, otherwise called Satan, of Baptist Lane, Savlamar, was shot and killed by unknown assailants in his community. The police believe his death was a reprisal for the triple murder that was committed earlier that day. Reports from the Savlamar police are that about 8 p.m., residents heard explosions and summoned them. Upon the arrival, Reed was seen lying in a pool of blood. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Westmoreland had tallied just over 100 murders since the start of the year and is one of the seven police divisions in which Prime Minister Andrew Holness has declared states of emergency. Three suspects arrested in murders of elderly St. Catherine sisters. The police have made a breakthrough with the arrest of three suspects in the murders of two elderly sisters in St. Catherine. The men were held on Wednesday, November 10, in the Spring Village community of Old Arbor in St. Catherine. They have been placed in the custody of the Major Investigations Division, which is spearheading the probe. Residents of Spring Village woke up on November 3 to the disturbing news of the gruesome killing of Christine Lewis, 69, a former teacher and justice of the peace, and her physically challenged sister, 72-year-old Lola Lewis. The sisters who lived together were discovered with their throats slashed inside their dwelling. Their house was reportedly ransacked. Several members of the St. Catherine community condemned the murders in the usually quiet community. Meanwhile, a man said to be an associate of the suspects in custody was on the night of Tuesday, November 9, shot dead about 8.40 p.m. in the Island Farm community in the Gutters area. He has been identified as 22-year-old Romario Harvey, also called Worm, of a Spring Village address. Harvey was found by residents on his back in a pool of water along the roadway after several loud explosions were heard. The Old Arbor police were summoned and his body transported to the Spanish Town Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Missing man's house burglarized. A mother already distraught that her adult son is missing 
has not been further traumatized by a burglary at his studio apartment in St. Anne. She is also denying reports on social media that a body found was that of her son. Reports are that detectives went to the home of 21-year-old Javier Green on Saturday and made reports that intruders pried open the metal bars on his gate that were meant to prevent just such an invasion. The dwelling was ransacked and clothes and food items stolen. His adoptive mother, Merle Cohen Green, said she feels violated by the burglary. Them tear off the grill and took out him clothes, the floor more them food and all those stuff. People know that he's not around and probably that's why they break it, she said. She isn't sure exactly when the apartment was burglarized, but said she made the discovery last Friday. She's sure that prior to the burglary, she had secured the dwelling. After Javier went missing, I went over his house once and found out that the grill was open, so I put one lock on it. I was wondering why I'm leave the grill open when him all is locked in place, she said. Cohen Green also disclosed that a week before Javier disappeared, he had complained that someone stole his computer and a television set from his room. She said Javier's stylishness, especially as it relates to fashion, was no secret. Me try to make him all right, declared his mother a business owner. November 1 was the last time she saw her son, who lives next door to her house in Exchange District, Ocherias. A taxi driver claimed that he saw the missing man with a woman the following day. According to Javier's mother, it is unusual for him to leave home for days without contacting her. Calls to his phone are going to voicemail. Several people last week posted on social media that a body found in a barn in the neighboring parish of St. Mary was that of Javier's. His mother, however, denied that claim. A police who know Javier very well and another friend, who know him very well look at the body and say it is not Javier, it is an older man, she said. She's of the view that with better support from the police, the mystery regarding her son's disappearance would be solved. The support that I want, I'm not getting it, she said before the police visited the house on Saturday. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Javier has been asked to contact the Ocherius police at 876-974-2533, police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. PM defends Chang and Anderson despite murder rate. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has given a passing grade to the Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, and to Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson for their handling of the crime portfolio under instances he described as unique to Jamaicans. Holness was speaking to journalists during a virtual press conference held at Jamaica House on Sunday, where he declared a state of public emergency, SOE, in seven police divisions. The Commissioner of Police, the Minister of National Security and the Chief of Defence Staff have all been doing, in my judgment and grading, a very good job with the resources that they have and the particular circumstances which are, in some instances, unique to Jamaica and very extreme, that they have been doing a very good job in tackling the issues, he said. Holness said that the decision to implement the SOEs came against the backdrop of a significant increase in murders across these divisions this year as the movement of Jamaicans is restricted by COVID-19 measures. According to Holness, the nation's already alarming murder rate has jumped by 10% in 2021, meaning that Jamaica remains in the top five homicide rates globally. Figures also show that the murder rate per 100,000 in the seven SOE divisions ranges from as low as 47 per 100,000 to a high of 190 since the start of the year. Police data show that as of Friday, 1,240 Jamaicans have been killed by the gun. 70% of them were innocent citizens, according to Anderson. He also revealed that 392 of those kills were recorded in four police divisions across the corporate area. Holness said that his administration has been in dialogue with the opposition People's National Party to come up with ways to restore the peace. The government has been in a political debate, particularly with the opposition, regarding how we can increase the immediate capacity of the state to respond to the scale of the increase in crime and the nature of the violence in crime. We have pioneered the use of the SOE in responding to what can only be described as a national emergency, he said. 102 new COVID-19 cases in Jamaica, two more deaths. The Ministry of Health and Wellness reported 102 new COVID-19 cases and two deaths on Sunday, November 14, bringing the local infection total to 90,311 and the virus death toll to 2,329. The new cases comprise 47 females and 55 males with ages ranging from 1 year to 78 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 29, St. Anne 26, St. Catherine 20, St. Thomas 11, 
St. James 3, Clarendon 2, Manchester 2, St. Elizabeth 2, St. Mary 2, Trelawney 2, Westmoreland 2, and Hanover 1. The deceased are an 89-year-old female from Westmoreland and a 70-year-old male from Kingston and St. Andrew. The deaths, which occurred between August and November 2021, were previously under investigation. In the meantime, 253 more people recovered in the last 24 hours, bringing total recoveries to 60,847. Currently, 201 persons are hospitalized, 31 of which are severely ill, while 14 are critically ill and 51 are moderately ill. There are 26,506 confirmed active cases on the island. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.